This is episode 10 of Pitching It With Ben. In this episode, I am joined by 2020 LPGA Tour rookie Jennifer Chang. We talk about adjusting to tour life, using the break to work on our mental game, as well as physically getting stronger, playing Lynx golf for the first time in Scotland, and we had fun taking turns drafting our favorite junk foods. All this and more on up. And don't forget to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for listening. Okay, so special guest today, Jennifer Chang, 2020 LPGA Tour rookie. What? This is a, it's such a wild year. You know, you're going to be a part of a super unique rookie class. Um, actually, yeah. This is just, I mean, who would have thought, you know, this is what my rookie year would be like? I mean, usually you think this is what would happen in movies and now here I am, like, can't really do anything except golf. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's just been a a crazy year for sure. Yeah, can you? So you just played five straight weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you've played all eight events, I think. You, there's been nine events, but one mm-hmm. was a tournament champion. So right. Mm-hmm. No rookies there. Um, so you played every event that you can play in. Yeah. What's what's it been like so far? What are some things that have been like? what you expected, what's been different. Obviously, mm-hmm. the pandemic and everything changes a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely um, the big adjustment coming from, you know, college to the tour life uh, this time, you know, not everything's done for me, at least back when I was at USC. You know, my coaches did all our flights. Um, you know, they covered our dinner fees. So there was nothing for us to really worry about but just school and golf. Um, But now, you know, there's way more at stake. Um, You know, I'm having to book my own flights, hotel reservations. So it's just finding a balance in my time. um, That's for sure. Uh, You know, now that I'm on the course way longer, it's like, what do I do with my free time? Because I'm not in school anymore. So, you know, it's just finding stuff to do. But, um, yeah, it's been... A crazy year so far. It's uh, been a roller coaster just trying to adjust to the new tour life uh, just because it is so different from college. Um, yeah. I, I do think in some aspects of it, college does prepare you. And then there's other parts of it where, you know, you just don't know what to expect. And I've heard from other um, players out on tour, they say that your rookie year is one of the hardest years. And I definitely believe it because it's, uh, it's been tough. Um, just trying to adjust to the new life, but uh, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. What, well, if you, some of the things you're comfortable talking about, what have been some of the tougher parts? Yeah, just the, um, you know, I struggled at the start. Um, you know, I missed three cuts in a row and I think a lot of it comes with expectations. Uh, as a college, um, player, I was pretty steady. Uh, I would, get a couple rounds over par if I, you know, at worst. And usually I was shooting even par or better most of the times. And I come out here and I'm, you know, shooting over par pretty consistently. And, you know, it's just fine tune in each week because it can be so different. Um, And, you know, that's how it felt like for me. Uh, And I think, you know, going through the quarantine helped me a lot, uh, prepare uh, my mental side of it because, you know, I really went into it not knowing what to expect on the tour life. Uh, got a sneak peek of it at the U.S. Open last year, but obviously that's the Open. It's so different from a regular LPGA tournament as well. So, yeah, I just – I really struggled my first three events uh, and then, you know, took some time off to really work on my mental side of the game. Um, and obviously my long game, short game, everything about that. Uh, and then worked out a lot too. I mean, that's all I could really do during that time. So, um, yeah, but you know, coming to after quarantine, I was able to make some cuts, make some money. (laughs) So, I mean, I've, I've learned quite a bit just from, you know, the five straight weeks. Uh, it's taught me a lot. Right. And, you know, you, you talked about the difference from college golf, you were 
actually, I was looking at some of your college stats. You, I think you were 72 scoring average. You're yeah. in 2019. Um, you know, even par most courses. And then you go out to the LPGA, you're shooting over par. But this right. return from the quarantine, everybody was <laughs> like the yeah. return was at these really awesome but very challenging golf courses. Mm-hmm. So yeah. <laughs> like Inverness right off the bat, you know, that's such a tough course to play. And I mean, I'm so glad that the LPJ was able to get us out there and play um, as the first start coming back from the whole quarantine thing. And, you know, it, it was tough. <laughs> I made it, I made the cut on the number. So um, I realized I tend to do that a lot, <laughs> um, but yeah, like Royal Troon, that was such, it's such a great course. And, you know, sadly, the first two days, we just got hit with really bad, bad weather. I, I don't think I've ever played in those type of conditions before, like 30, 40 mile per hour win. It was so tough. Um, but yeah, it was just my first time in Europe, too. So I was able to experience that. I mean, couldn't do much, but. <laughs> well, <laughs> right, right. Hotel, hotel, golf course, hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, driving on the other side of the road. How'd you do it? Yeah. How'd, how'd that go? Well, <laughs> my caddy drove, so <laughs> I didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> so, yeah, that was okay. Um, it was kind of scary at first, but he got used to it, so it wasn't bad at all. Okay. Yeah. Well, so you have these these two really difficult golf courses. You got, okay, so you started in Ohio at the Drive-On Championship. Were you prepared for five straight weeks on the road? Is that, like, was that in I, your head? I mean, I didn't. Because Scotland, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get it. That was right. kind of the whole deal. Um, and then obviously, if I got into Scotland, then, you know, if I can make it inside the cut and, you know, whatever number 20, I think top 20, get into British, that was the goal that I had. Um, and, you know, after that, I realized after I made the cut in Scotland that I was going to have uh, quite a bit of golf <laughs> going on. So um, I would never experienced that much golf. Uh, and junior golf, I'll get that, but not like five weeks straight. So that was such a huge learning curve for me. Um, just trying to adjust to, you know, going weekend and week out, um, and all the traveling and trying to figure out what days I want to play nine holes or 18 holes and what days I don't even want to play at all. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, very new to me. <laughs> right. No, but see, these are all things that you as a rookie I was like you have to learn like what's the balance for you like Mina Mina Haragai I don't know if you know mm-hmm. her or met her yet but she was talking to me earlier this year about how she doesn't really play practice rounds too much mm-hmm. anymore and some players love to play like 18 18 or for sure they're they're playing the courts like as much as they can or some players just like the right. range everyone has their own unique balance Mina this is her 11th season on tour I believe so she definitely like Oh, yeah. So she probably knows, like, (laughs) what works best for her. Yeah. Right, right. And then, but this year is also very different because you also, like, there's not, it's not like you can go, oh, we're going to go out to all these restaurants or sightsee or Mm -hmm. touristy things that a lot of times players, that's what you can do. Like, the Jutani Gardens, for instance, Area Moria, they'll, like, do their work early in the morning, typically, Mm -hmm. and then leave. They have the whole day so they can do things like that's yeah right um you know obviously with this year I think a lot of changes are happening for all the tour players um like for me at least uh usually I'll try to grab dinner somewhere at least in college that's what we did we'd always go out get dinner and now it's like you know you're having to order food take out or something because you can't do anything and also um for testing too like every tournament I've been to usually like at the start for the drive on, we couldn't get on the course uh, wow. Monday because we had to wait for our test results and same with Scotland. So I think, you know, it's different for a lot of players too. I'm sure they've had to adjust um, what their practice schedules are like. And, you know, I, I'm the type of player that would like to get as many looks as I can on the golf course. And I think slowly after, you know, five weeks in a row, I've learned, you know, maybe 89 holes is good enough for me. Um, so I, I think that's something um, that I've learned along the way. Cause I know junior golf or a college player like me, I would have wanted to 
probably play like 18, 18, 18, you know, right before. Um, but now I know that's probably not the best thing to do. And I always listen to what my body is saying. If I feel tired, then I know I don't want to go too crazy when it comes to practice. Right. Well, that's good. It's, I think that five week stretch too, just like, boom, we're back. Yeah. Like exactly. I know just, a lot of, <laughs> all right, back right at after home. quarantine. Yeah. Right. Like, I know a lot of players got used to taking carts. Some places require carts. I know, like, I know some of the Florida courses because of the pop-up storms and things. Like, hey, uh, like you guys are taking golf carts. Walking isn't always necessarily an option. Like, also, your professional golf or coming off golf your entire life. If you have a chance to take a cart, sometimes uh, maybe you'll take a cart. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, like A and A, they're taking carts because it's so hot. Yeah, like that course because I played the same time last year um because I played stage one there for Q school right right I've never been through something like that where it's gotten that hot like 114 degrees yeah it's dry heat but it's like hot air blowing into you at least if it's humid you'll get a little bit of a cold breeze but there it's like so different yeah oh actually that's great talk about Q series Q Q school and Q series. Yeah. That's like that a, was um wow. yeah, that was tough. Yeah. Um, so I had to go through all three stages. I know if you finish top five, I think in golf week for college players you can go to stage two. Um, but I had to go through all three and it's probably the toughest like weeks of my life in terms of golf. Like mentally and physically, especially um the final stage where it's two weeks in a row. Um so, yeah, I honestly, I wasn't sure what to expect because um, I had been playing pretty well my, you know, going into the Q school. And um, my goal was to obviously get my card and hopefully, you know, make it through. And uh, luckily I did on the first try, so that was nice. But, yeah, like I would say if I had to pick between, like, any of the stages, I definitely think the second stage is the hardest. Um, just because there's, you know, way more people. And just to make it in the next stage, you have to be, like, top 25. At least that's what it was for me last year. So yeah. it's very cutthroat, um, you know. But I I think I played pretty well. So, I mean, yeah, that worked out. <laughs> yeah. And then you get to Q-Series, which is just, you know, relatively new still at this point. Yeah. Eight, eight rounds of golf. Which, yeah, that was intense. <laughs> Very intense. Low-key, though, prepared you for this year and this um, – Oh, yeah. This, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Um, like, I mean, the thing is, second stage was basically right before third stage. It was a good, like, three and a half weeks, almost a month worth of golf that I was having to do. And on top of that, for me, I had schoolwork. So – I don't know if it's a good or bad thing because when I have schoolwork that takes my mind off golf. So that could have possibly helped me because I had so much to do. Um, but yeah, that kind of gave me a taste of what it would have been like on tour, just going week to week. Um, so yeah, that was quite the experience. And you ended up finishing tie ninth, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I finished yeah. ninth. Um, so I was able to get, my full uh, tour card, which is great. Which is really big, yeah. So I think that kind of, like, goes through um, – looking back at, like, your entire amateur record career, four-time state champion. Yeah. Go over, go over to USC and play really well, like, All-American, second-team All-American, then first-team All-American. Yeah. Um, like, you found a lot of success at every every stage, so it – I think it's not surprising that you played well and got your full status there first try on, on Q series or Q school and Q series. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I mean, I definitely wasn't like the top player. Like you wouldn't always see my name up there. Like, right. you know, Andrea Lee, Maria Fossey, but I think that transition from junior golf to college helped me a lot. Um, and I gained a lot of confidence after you know, going out and winning at the collegiate level. Um, I mean, that helped a lot. And my going in, because um, I graduated high school early, 
and then joined USC in the spring. That was like what Annie did. Um, and so obviously like her first semester was insane. That was ridiculous. Yeah. As a freshman, I couldn't even imagine. Um, Cause like my goal was like, I didn't know what to expect. Um, honestly, like if I want, I mean, after I got my first one, that definitely helped me a lot, but going in, I was just hoping just to play well and, you know, improve my game. And hopefully by that next semester I would win, but to get that first win, definitely, I think pushed me more as a player. And I think that's what helped me strive um, and be the player that I am now. Do you feel like a sense of like, I belong here. Like this is, I can compete at this level. Yeah, exactly. Like my goal every week when I went to compete, um, at least at, in college was to win no matter what. And I mean, that's like for everyone, but I think it's different when you do have some confidence. Um, and during that time, I just wanted to win every single one that I could. So, yeah. Well, what, what brought you to USC? So, you know, there's yes. you're in North Carolina. There's some pretty yeah. good schools in that area. <laughs> yeah. A lot um, of great schools. <laughs> I mean, Wake Forest, Duke, a lot of people ask me that question. And you know, it's funny. I only visited two schools. And that was USC and UCLA. <laughs> yeah, like, I just didn't want to stay on the East Coast. Um, like, I just really want to go out there on the West Coast. And I just – I like big cities. And obviously, LA being the biggest city in this country. Um, yeah, like, I just couldn't imagine myself anywhere else. Uh, and I just – I think with the weather, the facilities, and obviously USC being one of the top schools in the country, it was just like, why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I did... just thought Duke was, I mean, Wake Forest Duke, I just thought that was too close. So. Too close? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's like deja vu. Like, same story for um, Esther Lee. Do you know Esther? Oh, oh yeah, 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 Esther. So I played she... with her last week. Really? Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So she was LA and then like California area. And then she went to, originally she went to Duke and right. things, whatever things didn't quite go. She ended up transferring, but still it was like same thought, same thought process. I want to go <laughs> other <laughs> like, side, other then... side, other side, which is, it's kind of yeah. uh, interesting that you have maybe not so, but they're both great States with great schools, great mm -hmm. golf history. Um, but so USC though, see so you have there's so much like there's a lot of legacy there, and you yeah, go to the definitely. LPGA where there's Trojans everywhere. Like yeah, is just there the whole like alumni program, like the support system you get just from you know being at USC. It's just so strong that bond, and you know you just all feel like family. Like when I see Lizette or Annie or Robin, like you know it's like they're just super close so I mean it just comes with being part of coming from USC right do you have they um some of the fellow Trojans that have been out on tour for a little while have you talked to them gotten any advice or yeah definitely um I'm really close with uh Robin and she's kind of give me the whole like detail of it because um she gave me her struggles and you know I like hearing that side of the story because I know people tend to sugarcoat it and be like, oh, you'll get the hang of it. Like, it's just your first year and all that. But, you know, I like to hear the other side of the story and really, you know, the reality of the tour life and learning from her has helped me drastically. Um, you know, the mental side of it. And I just think she's just helped me a ton. Yeah. Well, she's a good one, I think. I haven't talked to her a lot. I remember interviewing her during, I think, her rookie year. So just talking to her, like she's someone who did, she got her tour card, then she lost her tour card, went to Symmetra, but earned her way back. Like it's, right. and that's not necessarily, definitely not easy thing to do. It's not easy to get mm -hmm. on the tour to begin with, not easy to stay right. out there. But then when you lose it, having the men like mentally resetting, right. like, hey, mm -hmm. I, what can I do to get back out there? And she did it. Right. So yeah, I think she's a good person to <laughs> take some of Yeah. Yeah. She's definitely got the experience under her belt. We were, I feel like our situations are similar in a way, at least um, when we first came out on tour, like her junior year, she got it on her first try and the same with me. And, 
you know, I was telling her my struggles and she's like, yeah, that's exactly what I went through my rookie year. <laughs> so it's always good to have someone there to talk to. Cause I know like I've seen articles about it, how lonely you can get on tour and I can see that. Um, and you know, just having people out there, um, friends, um, it definitely helps a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah. Especially, especially this year. When you have yeah, such a limited amount of people that can, like, come mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, like, it, it's so boring, too. Like, usually I would imagine, like, in Australia, I would get to hang out with Robin, and after our round, we would go get something to eat or, you know. But, like, now you can't even go anywhere. You know, you have to stay in your hotel room or the golf course, like, one or the other, nothing else in between. Yeah. Well, I think that – I don't know. But I think that it's going to be, like, once you guys get through this year, like, moving forward, you guys are going to be built up like that that mental yeah, strength exactly. and, like, you're ready for, for anything because no one was really yeah. ready for this. Do you remember? Yeah. So, like, in Australia, right, things started to, like, my memory, It start. that's when things started to kind of, like, hear about it more. Yeah, like, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I know, like, it broke out um, first, like, it happened more overseas. Like, it didn't really get to the U.S. quite yet. Um, and actually, I think it got worse after I got back from Australia because that's when they were, like, talking about how many people had symptoms of it or tested positive. And, like, during that time, I had been going out, like, because I had an apartment in L.A. <laughs> so after Australia, I stayed there just to practice, and I went down to Carlsbad, go back and forth. Um yeah, and, I mean, I was going out eating food. Like, n social distancing wasn't a thing. Wearing masks wasn't a thing. But now it's, like, everywhere. You have to do all those things. Right. So it, it was literally just – okay, so I was on my way to L.A. I was going to L.A. the week before uh, Founders Cup in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So I have family there, and I was going to – meet up with Lizette one day and like, we're going to catch up and just spend some time with my family. And then it started to like pick up and I was like, ah, I, I just, I don't know why, but I felt like it was going to be like, everything was going to be shut down. I could just cancel my flight, the Airbnb and everything early, mm -hmm. like two days before they announced it. And then it just, oh. like, everything got canceled. So like, okay, Founders Cups canceled trap. Cause I didn't know, like, my in my head, I was like, worst case scenario, I'm gonna get stuck on the West Coast, and that wouldn't oh. be like that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Right. <laughs> like, you know, I gotta have in and out and stuff. But um, <laughs> <laughs> good Korean food. Good I mean, Korean food. The everything's best. closed, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But at that time, I didn't know like where it would go. I just thought like I'm gonna get stuck here, and I I had family, so like I'd be able to like not like run a the bills like wouldn't cost tons right. of money, but mm -hmm. still I was like, oh, I'd rather be at home anyway. Yeah. It just yeah, escalated. So seemed so, it seemed to escalate so quickly. And then it was just like, so do you remember that time when they're, were you playing founders cup or planning? on uh, playing Yeah. I was supposed to go and right. it was literally the day before we were supposed to leave and they were like, okay, we're going to postpone the tournament. And then obviously it got canceled. Um, Things just, I feel like it's such a blur because everything happened so fast. <laughs> yeah. So, so fast. Like, I honestly didn't expect it to be, like, canceled. But obviously, as we got more data and learned about how serious this was, um, you know, that's when things started to go downhill from there. Yeah. Can you believe that it was just this year, the like, the Australia fires? Right? That was yeah, still this I, year. It seems like so long ago. ago like i can't i honestly can't believe it's september though like we're closer to 2021 than we are at the beginning of 2020 yeah how crazy is that i just can't wrap my head around super that super crazy yeah and i think um the lpj schedule pretty much like halfway done which is kind of i think more or less yeah yeah we're like nearly done i mean after portland got a couple weeks off and then you know got kpmg and all those terms so i mean the season's more than halfway over now which is crazy to think yeah and yeah. of course like korea and japan are kind of still to me i think they're big question marks at this point because they're having mm -hmm. their own struggles but um yeah um, like there's supposed to be some it's like a typhoon season right now and they just got hit with just 
a ton of rain. I don't know. I saw it on Twitter, but it looked bad. <laughs> yeah, I talked to some of my friends in Korea. They're just like, oh, mm. I think it's been multiple typhoons. It's like, yeah, yeah. Bad, like, and then everything's closed. Cause, oh, anyway. Yeah. Okay, back to your golf. <laughs> <laughs> There's so, just so much to talk about. <laughs> there, there is a lot to talk about. Can we? I want to talk about the AIG Women's Open real quick again. Oh, yeah. Because, so you were 100% you're going to be in that event, but you probably mentally were like, I'm going to play. Like, I'm going to play with the Scottish and I'm going to get into the event. Is that the mindset you kind of yeah, go into? Yeah, that? that was the goal because obviously, marathon top 10. Um, if you finish top 10, you were able to get into the British. But because I didn't play well there, I knew like my goal was to play well in Scotland and then use that to get into the British. And, you know, luckily I was able to. Um, and then kind of my mindset going into the British was obviously to play well. I wanted to make the cut. Um, but then that weather, I just, <laughs> that was just crazy. Yeah, I want you to break, break, like, break that down a little bit. So, so like, what's an funny example? story. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Scottish Open, good weather. I mean, didn't really rain, wasn't any crazy wind. Like, it was so nice. And from what I've heard, last year was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. So we got it lucky this year. And then British Open practice rounds were immaculate. Like, so good. Um, the pictures sunny, and, like, pictures and yeah, videos like, are awesome. <laughs> amazing and then you know I that was my first time playing Lynx golf so prior to that I would practice a lot of punch shots like low shots um because I knew with the wind it was going to be um pretty intense but not to the extent that I thought it was going to be uh because I was getting like I think on the front nine um, we just got sidewind right to left and I'm the type of player that draws the ball. So clearly that does not help. <laughs> doesn't help me. Um, like my caddy, it was just such a big adjustment because practice rounds, we didn't get that kind of weather. So when I had like 120 yards, I was like, what do I hit? <laughs> what do I hit into the wind? Um, right to left. Like it was just a big question mark. And then my cat was telling me like, Oh, we should probably hit a six iron. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> like from 120, you know, 120 yards. Um, but once you kind of play through it, you get the hang of it. And, you know, I learned after the first round what I need to do the next day. Um, so that, I mean, that helped getting the taste of it for the first round, but yeah, it was, it was tough. <laughs> so what was like the, some of the more extreme shots that you had like into the wind downwind yeah. like a, a I would say yeah at least for me the hardest part was just the side win on the front mm -hmm. nine I really struggled trying to figure out where I wanted to start my line and where I wanted the ball to end up because it's it's just such a long round mentally too just having to go through all that so just trying to stay patient um was such a huge thing for me and I think um like over the ball too. It's just frustrating because I'm getting ready to hit my shot and then I have to back off because of this wind. Um, like at, I think at a certain point, like I couldn't stand still without the wind like pushing against me. So I'd like have to step back like three times and it's, it's frustrating, but uh, yeah, just the, uh, it was just the wind. I think that was just the biggest thing for me. Did you have an opportunity to set like a, a new career long drive at any point, like down oh, yeah. or like a, <laughs> yeah, like the back nine, it was blowing down. It was so nice because I hit the ball so far. Like I felt like Maria Fossey when I hit the ball when it was downwind. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a challenge too, just having to adjust the, to the yardage um, with it being downwind. Obviously you want to hit it maybe even 20 yards short of the green just to get it, you know, in a good spot on the green. Um, so it was very different, the front and back nine. Um, and then I, I remember my second round. Um, I was expecting it to be downwind again, so I figured I'd have better opportunities on the par fives. But, no, it was dead across, this time left to right. So, I mean, it, wasn't, it didn't make it any easier, clearly. Um, 
but yeah. I feel like that's what, so I haven't played true links golf. I was like, unless you go to Europe, pretty much like you can't play true links golf. Mm -hmm. I guess you, ex right. I'm sure you played courses here that are like called links, but here in the U S but they're, they're not, it's, it's just not the same because it's not. yeah. Like the weather conditions. I mean, the closest thing I would say, like in uh, one of the courses we practice at back at school, uh, rolling Hills, it's kind of like a link style. Um, Cause I know they had redesigned it and, played it kind of that way but still it's just so different and i think that the influence of like the ocean or the the water and the wind like you talk about playing all the different winds usually we don't get too many like usually it's like one wind the whole day yeah. and the way the, the holes are laid out like you like they're they're not necessarily like back and forth like a lot of the courses right here. Mm -hmm. yeah you get very um, different winds. Like it can change very quickly too. And I think with Royal Troon being right next to the ocean, it's it's pretty intimidating. Like on the front nine, when you see, like I remember the par three, not, I mean the postage stamp, that one was pretty sick. But I mean, just with the ocean being there, being there it's the wind's obviously going to be stronger. So like I'm having to aim even further right. Uh, yeah, that was... <laughs> Oh my gosh. So, so those two, two weeks in a row, Lynx golf, what's your current feelings on Lynx golf? Um, I actually enjoyed it. It was, I mean, if I look back with the Scottish open, I mean, that was true Lynx golf. And, um, you know, there were a lot of different shots that I'm not used to hitting like hybrids. Um, when I'm around the greens, I use a hybrid, I think once while I was there. Um, but, it does, you do have to learn um, and you have to be creative in the different shots and where you put yourself in certain positions. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I had a ton of, a lot of fun in Scotland. Uh, yeah. Good, good. So I think that some people, they just love it. Like Lynx Golf mm -hmm. is it. And once they play, like they're hooked. Some people it takes a little longer, I think, to get from what I've heard. To like build up yeah. like okay links golf is is cool um but does it open up like kind of a new mindset for like of how golf is played oh yeah for sure i mean you know i'm using the shots that i would use there here sometimes um you know just trying to be creative because it might be useful for me you know playing out here in the states um i wouldn't say it's my favorite type of golf uh <laughs> i mean maybe if i spend some time there i'll and eventually like really love it but um it's i think after playing here and live growing up in the states it's i mean it's definitely not one of my favorites <laughs> yeah the change of pace well also yeah. you, though you got the that okay that second round at the the women's british was like the rain came on top of the, the wind, right? Yeah, like it was just a slap in the face, literally. <laughs> because like it actually kind of hurt with the wind and the rain. And you can't really hold an umbrella because it's like it might break or something and fly away. I don't know. Um, Carry you away. Just, it's just like so much going on. It's like you really have to focus on like one specific shot. I mean, it's so easy to get distracted out there, especially with so much going on. But, I mean, I just tried to soak everything in. I mean, you know, at the beginning of the year, it wasn't like – I wasn't sure if I was even going to play. And then being there now, it's just like, okay, well, now i got a taste of what it's like. You know, just use that as a learning experience and just move forward with it. Yeah. It sounds like you're – you're taking everything in stride, I think, and and putting things. You seem to like put things in, in storage pretty well. Yeah, I um, that's something that I've been working on too a lot with my mental coach because I think this goes for every player, like because everyone wants to play the best they can um, every week, and I think expectations can really creep in. Um, and that was something I struggled with at least the start of the year. Uh, you know. I expected a lot for myself uh, starting out um, on tour and, you know, after going through missing the cut back to back weeks, it's like, okay, 
I realized it was just more of a mental thing more than anything else. So I took the time during quarantine to just work on that and, you know, just look, not necessarily, not necessarily like be too positive, but just um, kind of more of like a neutral state of mind. Um, you know, if something bad happens, just take it and take my medicine and move on. That's kind of just how I see it. And always like to be very optimistic about um, how I play and going into each round. I try not to put a number on anything. Like, I'm not going to try to say, okay, today I'm going to shoot, like, four under. Like, no. Because uh, that's just not how golf works. It's so, like, it's just such a funny game. Like, you don't know what to expect. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing for me, uh, not putting – too much expectation just going in and playing my game you know what <clears throat> not to compare myself to you or any professional golfer because <laughs> <laughs> definitely not nowhere close <laughs> but um i played a tournament a couple weeks ago and just like a one one day tournament here mm -hmm. in indiana and i shot my best tournament round ever and oh my gosh. and it was you know it's not great it was 76 but Still, I'm best super, tournament round. That's yeah. like, you got to celebrate. <laughs> I, am <su> I am super <laughs> pumped about it. I I was too nervous. I actually, usually like the last hole, like the nerves, not that like I'm competing, but competing against myself for like the best score. So I come to the last hole and like driver, middle of the fairway. Okay, accomplish that. Like in the past, I probably would have, could have been like big slice, big hook. But no, middle of the fairway. Okay. Wedge to the green. Oh, put it to eight feet. Like, I just want to put it on the green. I gave myself a good chance. Left the putt. Ended up leaving the putt short. But I knew I secured my, like, best tournament mm -hmm. round score. And to relate this to you, what you're saying, just said a couple minutes ago, is that I knew the starter. And he, he was like, hey, like, do you have, like, a score in mind? And I was like, you know, no. I haven't played a, turn a competitive round of golf in, like, a year and a half. Like, I play once a year anyway. And it's been a long time since I played. I really, like, I knew I'd been playing pretty well, like, by myself, but I don't want to think about that number. Anyway, that's, that was the mm -hmm. point. Like, I didn't want to think about a number. I was like, I'm just going to literally try to just, well, it's kind of cliche, but have fun and one yeah. shot at a time and kind of exactly. let it, like, things take care of itself. Yeah, that's, like, that was something that I had struggled with a ton because I was very much just result-based, I was so focused on, like, what I was shooting. Um, and, like, that's what I – like, the thought during my round, too. It's like, oh, if I birdie here, then I'll get to, you know, one under. And, like, that just doesn't help me at all. And that's something that I've learned the hard way um, through my experiences. And I think, you know, that's helped me become a stronger player mentally. Yeah. So, Okay. Pivoting a little bit here real quick, too. 2017, you played on the Junior Solheim Cup team? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. Actually, yes. Uh, oh, you're repping? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. Uh, well, I didn't catch much of the Junior Solheim. I'm sorry. Mm. But it was, the, it was the first Solheim Cup I've been to, and Iowa was absolutely nuts, wild, crazy. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that like, was – yeah, I would never been there, and – I didn't even know where it was on the map, like, <laughs> Iowa, like, I have no idea, and, you know, I think the atmosphere there was just insane, like, it it made it that much better, having the spectators there, um, I, it was just such a cool experience playing out there, and I think that's probably one of the events that made me want to be a professional golfer, too. Those are my um, questions for you. Crowd and yeah, like I like it was always a goal of mine, but I never was like so passionate about it. Um, but that was like one event that really just made me want to be a profession a professional golfer and hope to play on the Solheim Cup. Yeah, so that was two questions for you. Um, you kind of answered them, like. <laughs> One, when you wanted to, like, when you thought about becoming a professional golfer. Two, after experiencing that, like, I feel like that environment's intoxicating. Like, it was intoxicating to me. Like, that first, <laughs> that first tee, like, I don't know. 
I mean, it's totally different than any other experience in golf because everyone's right. like quiet, mm-hmm. calm, but that is like get loud. And you had like, yeah, like Danielle. Like it just makes it that much more exciting. And, you know, being part of the Junior Solheim Cup team, we were able to meet all the pros um, and just kind of, you know, we hung out with them and uh, what's it called? It was like their meeting place uh, at the hotel and just to kind of see the fun side of, you know, the tour life was really neat. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy to think that, you know, I'm competing with those same players now, which I find just so funny. <laughs> it was literally like just a little over three years ago. Yeah. Not, yeah. Mm, not that long ago, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, I didn't have a timeline of when I wanted to turn pro either. Like if you had told me I was starting pro, I'd be playing on tour three years from now. I would have been like, what? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, just that atmosphere and being surrounded by, you know, the fans really made me love the game even more. Yeah. Yeah. I really hope we can get back to a, to the point where fans can be back. I know. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's so different. Um, even after you know, the first three events that I've played and last year at the U.S. Open. Um, it definitely um, – I think there's more of an adrenaline when you have fans. Uh, it's – I think, it, you know, that's what makes it an LPJ tournament. So, I mean, hopefully by next year we'll be able to have fans out. Um, but I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> right. I mean, so can you describe – like, what does it feel like – there's definitely a difference. You feel like there's a difference playing an event with no fans versus you did get the experience of at least three tournaments with fans. Yeah. Can you compare it to so. anything like junior golf at all? Like not quite junior I, golf, obviously because the best players I, in the world. Well, I mean, but it's like kind of similar in the sense of like just amateur golf in general, because you only have like, you'll always get volunteers in any tournament. Like we get volunteers in college I mean not college but in junior golf tournaments and amateur events but um like I'll just see my mom walking on the fairway like it just brings back memories from like college and just amateur golf so it is different but still the mentality of you know trying to perform well is still there um for sure like it doesn't change how we approach um certain shots Um, in any way yeah right I mean and there's the pressure of like you know paychecks and yeah (laughs) yeah definitely that I think that's the biggest thing for me um because I mean golf is a sport where you don't know if you're going to get paid or not you know so I mean I think there's for some people thinking about money is like a big thing at least for me that's not something that when I'm out playing that's not what I think about um I think I was the first part of the year was struggling just to make the cut. Like I was so focused on the cut line. Um, and I think that's what, you know, prevented me from playing the best that I could. Uh, and, you know, I've learned from that. I know, you know, if I can just focus on each shot and not be so worked up on the cut line and the results and, you know, I should be able to make the cut. Yeah. You know that, so you're working with a mental coach. I've never worked with a mental mm-hmm. coach, but it's just something I've noticed. I feel like it's kind of human nature where also if you're thinking about a specific number, like the cut, mm-hmm. for instance, if the cuts even, mm-hmm. then you tend to kind of play to that level sometimes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Which yeah, it's mm-hmm. so like, if you set up, say like push ups, you're like, I'm going to do 25 push ups, And all of a sudden like 23, 24, 25 is difficult. But if you set the goal yeah. for like 35, you would have blown past 23, 24. You know what I mean? Like Exactly. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, that's – I think that's – and we talked about that too with my mental coach about how if you shift your focus on one specific thing, you're only going to like – if I shift my focus on the cut line being plus two, my scorecard I know is only going to get closer to that number um, if that's the only thing I'm focusing on. And – now that I know, <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, 
it's a, it's probably a process, but you could talk about during the quarantine time. So I thought overall, I thought that it was going to be my personal feeling, just knowing the life of golfers is that it was probably going to be beneficial to a lot of people just because there hasn't been a break it, in like your entire life almost like mm -hmm. there's yeah like, i think that's the longest i've ever gone without playing a tournament yeah yeah so you have an opportunity to probably try some new things and also get a break like some people maybe they've been dealing with a little bit of an injury nagging injury that could heal or a swing a, ch a, a swing change being able mm -hmm. to actually lock it in because even during yeah. the normal lpga season the off season is really not that long it's like yeah exactly month, like a month and a half yeah mm -hmm. max so there's not really time to ever implement you're always working on little changes i think like yeah but having that long a break you could do a full like and lock it in get yeah know. exactly and i think that's that's why i think i've done a better job mentally um over the course of these five weeks because if i hadn't you know gotten that break you know i would have been right where i was kind of during the first three tournaments and then just having to let that carry on and drag on for the next few. Um, so I really just, you know, because there was so much time, I just took the time to work on basically everything, um, every part of my game. And I think it did help me immensely. Um, and also it gave me free time to just do whatever I wanted. So <laughs> what yeah, was your like favorite? I did a lot of, yeah. Um, I would say, Okay, TikTok is like my favorite thing ever. Uh, I was, I'm still obsessed with it, but during quarantine, like, did a bunch of TikTok. Um, I think everyone went through kind of like a baking phase, like banana bread. Uh, I made cookies. Like, I did a bunch baking. Um, I don't know. There's, I mean, there's not much you can do really. I, I mean, I reorganized my room. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, I did get onto TikTok a little bit too, but I didn't do any dances or anything. Did you do like the TikTok dances? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, like my friends, like we send each other the stuff that we do, and um, it's just fun. Just something fun to do. Uh, like that's like if I'm on my phone, that's probably what I'm looking at most <laughs> of the time. It's my favorite app ever. <laughs> it is very addicting because. Yeah. You can get into your, like, whatever you're interested in. If it's the dances or if it's baking or if it's art or whatever. And you can just, like, mm -hmm. go forever. It is a lot of Yeah, fun. exactly. Yeah. Okay, so just a few, like, quicker questions to kind of wrap, wrap things up. Do um, you have any superstitions? Okay. Um... I don't play with the number one, like on my golf ball. Yeah. I had just traumatic experiences with it uh, in junior golf, uh, and I just learned not to use it. So now I just use <laughs> two, three, and four when I play. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do, you, do you mark the ball in a special way? or? Um, no, not really. I just put my initial. And, I mean – there's nothing else. I think that's the only superstition is just pl not playing with the number one. <laughs> I only use that for practice round days. Ah, uh, nice. I'm gonna say every uh, you have some a big collection of golf balls by this point. It's yeah. Just... <laughs> um, what is your favorite golf memory to this point? If you can put it down, or maybe a couple, if you if you want to have a couple uh, choices. One of my favorites, definitely like the highlight would at least for my college career would be the East Lake Cup. Um winning that as a team. I mean that was just being able to play there in itself was pretty neat. Um and then winning um, I'd say winning regionals last year. That was pretty big for me. Um yeah, I don't can't remember I feel like East Lake's probably up there though. Definitely one of the highlights for college. It was, it was super fun. So, okay, uh, conversely, or opposite a little bit, is there an embarrassing moment that's happened to you on a golf course? Oh, this was about, this is about Eastlake too. Um, so I was like browsing through YouTube 
and I saw like East Lake Cup fails, and that was the year we played. I was the thumbnail <laughs> because I remember the whole. Um, I think it was number twelve, the par four. Pushed my drive so far right, like I thought it was gone. Um, nearly out of bounds. It was right next to the fence too, and. The thumbnail is just me pointing out to the right where I hit. I was just like this. I mean, that's that's pretty embarrassing. So you were think, just <laughs> you were just yeah. randomly scrolling through, and you're like, "Hey, that's it, me." <laughs> yeah, it came up on my like recommended videos, and I was just like, "What is this? That looks like me." And I realized it was. So, yeah, I'm on East Lake Cup fails. If you YouTube, it's probably still up there. <laughs> Who took the time to compile that? <laughs> I don't know. So. Um, if you weren't playing golf, what would you be doing? If I wasn't playing golf. Well, now I would probably want to be like a TikToker or a YouTuber. I feel like YouTube would be like so fun. I just don't know what I would do though with YouTube, <laughs> honestly. Um, like when I was younger, I wanted to be just a famous singer. Um, like I – did chorus too in middle school and I remember like I would just like sing in front of the mirror and stuff um yeah but that's definitely out the window never what never singing my mom tells me not to sing so <laughs> I'll take no, my mom's word for it <laughs> not even not even at the Nore Bang yeah oh no Nore Bang <laughs> well I love karaoke like um it's so fun I would uh, I remember we went it was like last fall i went um before i had left school with my teammates it's super fun yeah jamie, have you been to korea jamie east also oh yeah chemi so yeah Dong <laughs> um yes i've been to korea twice um, <gasps> oh my gosh <laughs> my this favorite. is so fun i i was supposed to my plans this year was to be there from september 24th to november 4th Oh my gosh. I mean, you probably still can go. Maybe. I mean, wait for the typhoon season to be over too. The thing is though, is that there's the mandatory two week quarantine. Oh, and since yeah. I don't have a residence there, it's, I have to go to the government facility and it's like $110 a night and I can't leave the room at all. Oh. So, um, Oh my gosh. <laughs> Maybe ask uh, one of the <laughs> players on tour if they have a, an apartment there you can stay. I know, just let me. Like, there's a lot of people that aren't home right now. Yeah. Um, I do know quite a few people over there, but I don't. I don't know if I'd take that. That um, <laughs> use that. What do you call it? Use that favor at, at yet. Oh. <laughs> Not, because there's a lot of things closed too. But yeah. It's okay. I'll have I'll have more chances hopefully. Um, but I've definitely enjoyed my time in Korea. Um, what's your favorite sport other than golf? I love watching football. It's probably my, like, college football is my favorite ever. Um, and last year I got into, like, watching basketball. Um, at least back at SC, I would go to the games. And it's super fun to watch. I think it's more fun to watch it in person um, with basketball than it is football. Like football, I'd rather watch at home <laughs> on my couch. <laughs> were you were you a student section person while you're at USC or no? Um, I've only gone to like a couple games, uh, but I mean, it's just like I wouldn't stay the full game. Definitely would not. Um, like maybe like till the first half or like you know till halftime, and then I would just leave. <laughs> yeah. I got you. I haven't been to a USC game, but I just, you know, I guess football is football. Oh, but I mean, it's so fun. I mean, <laughs> going to the games, obviously, like, pregame and everything, that's a whole experience. Um, yeah, it was just I, – I think SC was, like, the best two years of my life. It was so fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Let's see. I, my, I graduated from IU, Indiana University. Oh, okay. Oh, so, that's a big party school then, huh? Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny no legit like just talking about football the the tailgate are massive but no one goes oh, to the I games bet. so like the I part that's like every college you know but game. but i mean Unless like it's an intense 
Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, this, the stadium would stay, like, empty. Like, oh. I, I mean, I mean, like, because it's gotten a little bit better in the last few years, I guess, but it's, <laughs> it's a basketball school. This is a basketball state. Oh, right, not, right. This mm-hmm. is not a football, like the, yeah, not like SC, but. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite food or favorite yeah. couple of foods? Okay, Korean food's up there. Like, a meal that I always ha- – have you heard of doku? Like, it's a rice doku. cake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like rice cake soup with egg in it. Like, that's one of my favorites. Um, and then anything sweet. I love dessert. Love, love, love dessert. Um, like if you ask my teammates. I remember I went through – you know, like the Oreo? Um, just those little Oreo containers or whatever. Um, I went through that in, like, a couple days. <laughs> like the whole thing it's so bad so bad but i love it <laughs> so uh i guess that ranks in junk food junk food eater <laughs> yeah i love junk food anything junk food is like my alley right up my alley fair game okay okay i want to come back to that in a minute um favorite place to travel or favorite place that you have traveled to this point i would say Australia that's so, like that was the first time I had ever gone outside of the country to play golf um, but I mean it's so pretty there like I went to Melbourne um, it just sucks because a lot of things close early there uh-huh. that's what I realized um, like co- after a workout like me and Robin um, we were trying to get coffee after we had worked out and a lot of the shops were closed it was only like 4 p.m. too what? So we were just like, what? what is going on? Um, but yeah, that's probably one of the coolest places I've been. Um, like Scotland's cool, but I didn't really get to explore the city. But yeah. Right. But I do have to say LA is up there more because <laughs> of K-Town. <laughs> Love it. You know, that's literally when I asked Robin, I did ask Robin that exact question. Her favorite tour stop that year um, for food. And she's like, L.A. Like, duh. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> Korean food is just the way to go. I love Korean food. I just yeah. made some tteokbokki uh, <gasps> a few, week, a few oh weeks ago. Oh, my gosh. You're, yeah. like, just full on Korean. <laughs> you, <laughs> like, that's not easy to make either. Um, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Pause, pause, pause. This was <laughs> – <laughs> I should say <laughs> – did you take I, out or something? I should say more like took it from the package and, and made it. Oh, okay. But the most proud <laughs> thing I'm I, the thing I'm most proud of making is japchae. <gasps> oh wow! That was. There's a lot that goes into that, like ingredients wise, like sauces and all that. Like I don't even know how to make it. <laughs> that was a long process. The first one was so good. Like I'm not like I don't want to brag about myself because I'm not that person. But it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i uh i gave some to my son sing and uh-huh. to her daughter and her daughter was like it's better than yours mom <laughs> <laughs> then it's gotta be good <laughs> I guess it was, it was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> um what's your favorite song at the moment um let me go to my playlist i'm gonna check right now i've got a lot but um I like this question because I think it's like a time capsule kind of thing. If I go back to this interview, like five years from now, you're like, whoa, I was listening to that. <laughs> yeah, I my taste of music changed a lot. Like, before I got to school, I'd listen to a couple country songs, but I was more into like just the top 50 hits, um, like hip hop, rap, like that kind of stuff. And then obviously all the songs they play at like, you know, the parties you go to in college. Like, it's a lot of, like, fast-paced, like, EDM type stuff. And I got into that. But now, most of them are just, like, TikTok songs. <laughs> um, but I will say, like, one song that I really like right now is... Um, let's see. I have it in here. <laughs> so, I've, I've got a lot, a lot of songs. Um... I would say, okay, 
this one. I don't listen to a lot of Korean songs, but um, you know, you probably know BTS. Yeah, so their new song, Dynamite, that was really good. Um, I've been pretty obsessed with it nonstop, so I'd say that's up there. <laughs> that's good. This is the BTS era. Yeah, it really Or is. actually, K-pop in general, like it's just hit mainstream. Yeah, like the amount of, I just see it all the time on Twitter. That's where I get most of my news from, but like the amount of views that they have in their music videos is insane like it's ridiculous they have yeah. like over 100 million in a day that's how dedicated these fans are super dedicated i know several like some family <laughs> friends like they're they're oh, really younger well they're teenage girls now but like i always mm -hmm. thought of them as like younger sisters i watched them like mm -hmm. grow up but they're <laughs> obsessed and uh one of them has gone to three concerts already all in chicago yeah. it's like close oh. to us yeah but the tickets Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I heard it's really hard. Like one of my teammates, she loves BTS and um, she had to open up and she asked like one of my other teammates to help her out and they had like six tabs open and it's really hard to get. And I, I've only been to one concert, um, Post Malone. So that was oh, a nice. good first concert. I love Post Malone. One of my favorite artists. Yeah. The only real concert I've been to was uh, Tori Kelly when she was not like before she was known really by anybody. Oh, so it was like, it was oh, a, yeah. a, such small, a good singer. smaller theater. And so like, you're really close and like, yeah, oh, yeah. that was really cool. She's a really good singer, but um, yeah, so good. The opposite of post Malone vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd say so. <laughs> okay. So last thing I wanted to try this out. I saw it on a couple of podcasts, like doing like a draft kind of thing. And I, mm -hmm. I should have told you before, so you could have thought of, thought of some things. But I was going to do, like, a movie or a sports movie. I don't know. Do you watch movies at all? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I'm not, like, huge into movies, but I definitely, like, go through phases with yeah. See, you mentioned junk food. So I think we can have a junk food draft. So, <laughs> if, so if we take turns drafting, like, our number one pick of junk food. Okay. So, and then once it gets picked, then the other one can't have it. Oh, okay. So how, so how, do we just keep going back and forth? Go back and forth. Or you could, okay. normally you do like three people. So it goes like one pick, one pick, two picks, one pick, two picks, one pick. Like it goes. Kind oh, of, gotcha. Okay. Um, but let's see. You can go, you can go first. Number one junk food choice. Number one junk Hmm. Oreo McFlurry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you brought it. <clears throat> you got the Oreo and ice cream. That's kind of like. Oh, that's what, see, I was <laughs> thinking there. <laughs> okay. Um. Wow. See, this is where I should have been more prepared. But I <laughs> maybe like. Ooh, I want to say. It could just be really broad. I'm just gonna go like potato chips. How about ke kettle kettle cooked potato chips? That's a good one. Okay. Um, this hard because I'm really trying to think what boba. <laughs> boba. Boba. Oh my god! I had boba yesterday. You did. Yeah, boba's up there. I love boba. <laughs> you have some good boba spots near you. Yeah, like we had one open up not that long ago, and they they're super popular. I've gotten my boba there um, pretty often recently, at least. Probably have to travel like an hour to find boba. Oh no! I mean, if you're in LA, you get one like within five minutes near you. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> every block, every block somewhere probably. Okay. Um. Dang it. You took ice cream off. That's my favorite one. Um, <laughs> it was my idea. I'm not even ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, how about in the candies? Candies? Oh, like Reese's. Reese's. Oh, Reese's. Reese's. Um, let's see. Ramen. Does that count? Ramen. 
that like junk food ish. I mean, it's not that great for you. <laughs> it's not that great for you. But yeah, I guess that that counts. That counts. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's a good choice. Um, I'm thinking about some Korean uh, street foods. Oh, I'm so upset. I can't think of the name right now. Oh my goodness. What is it, what does it taste uh, or like what's in it? Maybe if I like the the little um it's like a little it's round, they'll put it in a cup and it has like honey and nuts in the inside, like a pastry kind of thing. Um, um I am so Oh is it is it um oh, it's like cinnamon, right? Mm. Is it like a pancake kind of hot dog? Yes. Is it hot, hot dog? dog? Hot dog. Oh yes. yeah! Oh, that's a good one. That's so good. Oh. <laughs> um. Wow! I didn't even think of that. Craving cravings right now. What? Well, that's kind of tough because when you start to enter other like. <laughs> it's like it's very broad if you think about junk food too, huh? Yeah. Um. I don't know. I think Ooh. what I've had. I got one. Oh no! I'm gonna see if I can steal that. <laughs> Let me see. If I have telepathy. Um, trying to think. If you take out, we still mad. Is it sweet? Is no. It <laughs> <laughs> what? Hints. Um. But no, let's it's not. See. Oh, what? Why can't I? Why is it hard to think of something? Um, something like chocolate, almond joys, almond joys, are probably one of my favorite chocolates. Types of chocolate. I just ate a bunch of those last week, actually. <laughs> it's so good. It's my favorite. favorite. <laughs> Wait, almond joys? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, French fries. <laughs> I was literally about to say that too. I was going to say fries. Really? <laughs> oh, okay. Have you tried fries with? Like, okay, McDonald's fries with their McFlurry. Have you done that? I haven't. I've only done Wendy's fries with the Frosty. Oh, okay. So it's like same thing. Okay. It's, same thing. Anyways, it's good. Super good. <laughs> Super good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about one more pick each? Okay. Um, I'm going to have to be basic. I just go like a burger. <laughs> Shake Shack burger. <laughs> Fries and a burger, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um how about donuts? I was gonna say pastries in general, but <laughs> Why did it, Krispy Kreme donuts? Why didn't I think of that? Oh my gosh. It's because there's so many amazing junk foods. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a good pick. That was a good one. I came on strong at the end. I yeah. I struggled, but I struggled really at the start. Did. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay jennifer thank you so much for talking this afternoon yeah thank you so much for having me it was so much fun yeah i look forward to i really don't think i'm going to make it to any events this year it looks like it's uh, not going to happen fingers crossed but i just just protocols and everything but hopefully next year then hopefully next year though um <laughs> i'll probably be out trying to catch up with people at some point when it's safe but um anyway yeah. <laughs> Nice to meet you and thanks for nice talking. Nice to meet you too. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you for listening to episode 10 of Pitching It With Ben. If you liked what you heard, please like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share. See you in episode 11. <laughs>